Scene one, take one. There are many different reasons that a couple may not be able to get pregnant. We presented to the patients that what we're going to check for are, does the woman have eggs? Are those eggs being released at the proper time and on a regular schedule? Does the male have sperm? And can the eggs and the sperm get together? Can they meet? Are the fallopian tubes open? Is the uterine cavity normal and able to accept a pregnancy? So male factor infertility typically involves either low sperm counts, low sperm motility, low sperm volume, or a variety of different abnormalities with the sperm. Female infertility can be associated with tubal factor, where the tubes may be damaged or blocked. There can be low egg numbers or low egg quality or quantity. That's called diminished ovarian reserve. Other female factors that are associated with infertility are anovulation or when a woman does not ovulate regularly. Sometimes no reason is found for infertility and we term that unexplained infertility. First step in a couple that cannot get pregnant would be to have a visit with a reproductive endocrinologist and an infertility specialist because a thorough history and workup needs to get done. We recommend that patients pursue an infertility workup if they've been trying to conceive for one year without success if the age of the woman is under age 35. And we recommend that they come in for an evaluation after six months of trying if the woman is 35 years of age or older. Genetic testing is available for specific disease states. There are two different types of genetic testing that can be done on embryos. One is called pre-implantation genetic screening, and one is called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Pre-implantation genetic screening is looking for chromosome abnormalities in an embryo. This is very important because chromosomally abnormal embryos typically result in a woman not getting pregnant or an increase in miscarriage rates. Prior to transferring an embryo into a woman, we can increase the pregnancy rate decrease the miscarriage rate, and we can also decrease the rate of multiples, or twin or triplet gestations. The way we do this is that we can be more confident that the embryo we are transferring will result in a pregnancy, and we can therefore transfer less embryos. Pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is looking for a specific disease state. In order to perform that testing on an embryo, we need to know precisely what disease state we are looking for and what the disease looks like in the person that created the egg and the person whose sperm that we used. So we need very detailed analysis on the genetics of the egg and the sperm prior to testing that embryo to look for that specific disease state. Valley offers all infertility treatments everything from donor sperm inseminations, artificial insemination, in vitro fertilization, using a gestational carrier, testing our embryos through pre-implantation genetic screening and diagnosis, and basically any fertility treatment option. Couples can start an infertility workup either through their general practitioner, primary care provider, OBGYN, or a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist. We always welcome patients to come straight to us for a workup and evaluation. However, if they prefer to go to their OBGYN first, that's never a problem. The process for in vitro fertilization involves combining a woman's eggs and a man's sperm in the laboratory. We do this by obtaining multiple eggs from the woman. A woman needs to take hormone injections to mature multiple eggs. The eggs are then removed from the woman's body using an outpatient surgical procedure called an egg retrieval. The procedure is all done through the vagina so there's no scars on their belly. The eggs get removed and brought into our laboratory and combined with either their partner's sperm or donor sperm. We check for evidence of fertilization one day after the eggs are removed. If the eggs have fertilized normally, they're now called embryos. Embryos get monitored in the laboratory for the next five days, at which point we can either place an embryo inside a woman's uterus or cryopreserve the embryos for future use.
donor sperm insemination involves putting sperm from a sperm donor inside a woman's uterus. It's important that we time this insemination properly because donor sperm has been frozen and does not last as long as fresh sperm. In order to time the insemination properly, we have to know when a woman is ovulated. One way is a woman can check for ovulation at home using an ovulation predictor kit. An alternative option is for a woman to come to the office for periodic evaluation of their blood hormone levels with a blood test and an ultrasound to see if a follicle is developing. A follicle is a potential egg. Once an egg is developed, we can either release that egg with a shot called Avadrel, which is a hormone shot that releases the egg and then time the insemination accordingly. Or we can wait for the woman to ovulate on her own and we can see evidence of this in her blood work. Egg freezing requires mature eggs to be removed from a woman's ovaries. In order to mature the eggs, women need to take fertility medications, which are stimulant medications, to get the eggs to go through the maturation process. And once the eggs look mature, we remove them with a surgical procedure and the eggs are removed through the vagina so there's no scars on the belly and they do get put to sleep so they feel no pain during the procedure. It's a same day procedure and women go home the same day and the eggs are brought into the laboratory and frozen. Eggs are frozen via a process called vitrification and it's a flash freeze method where they're frozen in an inanimate state and they should be able to be used certainly for a woman's reproductive lifetime or for about 10 years. Success rates are dependent on many different factors, whether using fresh eggs or frozen eggs. Success rates are primarily dependent on the age of the egg. So if an egg is frozen in a younger woman, it's going to have a higher success rate. We're certainly gonna see a higher success rate dependent on the age of the woman that when the eggs were being used. So if we're comparing using frozen eggs from a 30-year-old woman or fresh eggs from a 40-year-old woman, that's not a good comparison. In addition to that, the center where you're having this performed has a big impact on success rate. Valley has excellent success rates using both frozen or fresh eggs. The answer of what age a woman should consider freezing her eggs is unclear. What we do know is the younger you are when you cryopreserve your eggs, the higher chance of success when going to use these eggs. However, we have to factor in what is the likelihood that you're going to need these eggs. Maybe you'll meet a partner and have pregnancies without the use of these eggs. What is the financial cost of freezing these eggs? So those things have to be factored in. Some recent studies have suggested that 37 might be the best age. If you haven't met a partner by 37, the chance of success using 37-year-old frozen eggs is very good and the likelihood that they'll need to use these frozen eggs is more likely.